The comments and demos presented in this training apply to Autodesk Smoke 2013, pre-release trial 1. This software is in active development, so screens and functions will change over time. Hi, this is Larry Jordan, and this is Session 3, Introduction to the Interface. My goals for this session are to illustrate the major sections of the Smoke interface. There's three main sections to the Smoke workspace, as they call it. The Media Library, which is similar to the browser in Final Cut Pro. The Viewing Panel, which contains viewports, places to view videos. And the Timeline Panel. Unlike other applications, you really can't customize the interface very much. Right-clicking is the key to working with Smoke. So let me show you how to navigate inside the application, explore the interface, and review right-click options. <laughs> all right, all right, I know I've got stuff loaded into the interface, and I haven't, <laughs> haven't even shown you how to do that. I'll do that in the next movie. But there is nothing more boring than looking at an interface that has nothing in it. So I thought I'd load something for us to look at as we explore the new look of smoke. The entire environment of smoke is called the workspace. The workspace consists of three panels. There's the media panel over here on the left, the viewing panel on top, and the timeline panel at the bottom. The media panel is where we store stuff. It's like the browser inside Final Cut Pro 7. The viewing panel is where we view stuff, whether it's the source clip on the left or the program on the right, and there's options. I'll talk about that in just a minute. The timeline is where we build stuff. So we store it, we view it, and we build it. Inside the media panel, we have a variety of options. We can see sequences, we can see source clips, we can see folders, effects clips. Now, an effects clip is something we haven't seen before. It's a small piece of metadata that allows us to copy effects from one clip to another. We can also see search results. For instance, down here at the bottom of the media panel, if I type in, say, the first couple letters of the word dancing and press the Enter key, all the clips that have dancing in them are highlighted in the search results folder, which allows me to say, that's the clip that I want. If I've got hundreds of clips, being able to search for it is a very cool thing. To be able to clear that, you either click the X in a circle or just click and delete the text. And when the search is gone, the clips themselves are they are not gone. They're just simply not displayed as part of the search. We can see the media panel in a couple of different ways. Down here is an option which says move it to the right side. Whoop, there it is over to the right. Or move it up full screen, move it to full screen. Or go back to that pop-up and say, I don't want it full screen. And go over to here. I don't want it on the right side, just uncheck it. In fact, you can even hide it by clicking hidden. And it gives you more room to see your images if you don't need to see the media panel. But in this case, we do. So we'll make sure that it's there on the left-hand side. There are menus at the top. We can see them across here. The problem is these menus are you know, they're helpful. It makes me feel good. Their mother likes them, I'm sure. But there's not a lot of control up here. That's because Smoke feels that the best place to put controls is wherever your mouse is at that moment in time, with what's called contextual menus. If you right-click on a clip, it allows you to create new folders, new sequences, generate things like color bars. You can cut, copy, and paste clips, delete a clip. By the way, if you delete a clip, all you're doing is deleting the link inside Smoke. You're not actually deleting any media files that are stored on your hard disk. There's contextual menus all over the screen. Wherever you click, a different pop-up is going to show up. So when in doubt, don't look at the menus at the top. Simply right-click with your mouse, and that'll show you what your options are. As we move from the media panel to... Well, let's go to a sunset shot. As we move from the media panel over here to the viewing panel, there's two monitors here. There's the source, which we would call preview, and there's the sequence, which we would call program. Or in Final Cut terms, this is the viewer and this is the canvas. We can change this display by going to this menu right down here. We can say, take a look at thumbnails. And there's the thumbnail of what we're looking at. We can say, show the player. This is a single viewport, to use smoke terms. It's a player that allows us to see a single movie, whichever is highlighted in the media player. Go back and source sequence is preview and program. We also have a triptych. 
the triptych shows us three images. We would use this for color grading and color correction. Most of the time, you'll leave this set at source sequence. But here's a cool secret. See this little arrow right there? When you click it, it moves you to full screen view. And you've got controls down here. The JKL keys work, spacebar to play, spacebar to stop. Move your cursor down toward the bottom. You see thumbnails of other clips. Move your cursor back up. The thumbnails disappear. To get back out again, press the escape key. So this takes you into full screen mode and the escape key brings you back. You can do full screen on the source or you can do full screen on the program. And here you can use the JKL keys to quickly move from one shot in your sequence to another. Again, the escape key to get you back out again. We also have the ability to change the display of what's inside these two monitors by going to the options menu. We can preview effects, we can view effects in real time, which is just way cool. But I want to show you these show overlays. When you display show overlays, this allows you to add things like title safe, or action safe, or both action and title safe. You can even create your own custom safe. So if you say you want to have stuff be 4% or 8% in from the edges, you can do that. In our case, I'm going to turn title safe off. We can add grids. We can determine the center of objects. There's a, a lot of visual controls here. And you can set up your own custom settings, save them, and open them up as a set whenever you need it. So you don't have to go through this configuration routine all the time. Let's click Done just to put that away. The timeline is the bottom panel, and we're going to spend the next two movies talking about the timeline panel. But look at what's below the timeline panel. This is not a place we see interface very often. There's a timeline tab and the media hub tab. The timeline tab is where we are now. This is where we edit our projects. The media hub opens up an entirely different window, which is where we import and export our clips. We'll be talking more about that in the next movie. So if you're bringing stuff in, you do that from the Media Hub, and it's the tab on the left. If you are editing, you click on the Timeline tab, and now we're back to the timeline for doing editing. There's a lot to the interface, and we, this just really scratches the surface, but the big thing I want to do is just explain where stuff is and help you understand how to move around inside it. Most of the keyboard shortcuts you already know. Spacebar to play, spacebar to stop, JKL keys. When in doubt, try the keyboard shortcuts you know and see what happens. In the next movie, I'm going to talk about the timeline, how we bring clips in, how we mark clips with an in and out, how we edit them down to the timeline, and how we turn our clips into projects. I'll talk about that next. The interface is designed to be clean and neat. Rather than build a lot of menus at the top, Smoke uses a vast number of contextual menus that are available via right-clicking. By combining right-clicking with familiar keyboard shortcuts, Smoke is focused on saving you time. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching.